Booty beat your Borton Booty beat. Beat your Borton Booty and Booty beat. No, I'm only messing with you. I'm not the cook from the Muppets. I am Dennis Worth, and you are tuned in to the Comedy Kitchen. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, hey, we do my two favorite things in life. We cook up some food and eat it. The eating part's the best part, and we do some stand-up comedy. Um, today I brought on one of my guests that I've worked with a lot in comedy. Great guy out of the Boston area. One funny comic on the scene. Please help me welcome Mr. Matt Kona. Matt. Oh, hey. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you, Dennis. All right. You excited today? Cook some stuff up? Absolutely. It's He's great ready to, to be go. here. All right. We're going to be making some vegetable chow mein today. You ready for that? Absolutely. He's ready Let's to get cooking. You ready to do some comedy? You ready in a funny mood today? Yeah, yeah. Cooking, comedy. He's in a funny mood. I'm down All for right. both of them, yeah. Listing well, before things. Before we get started, we not only have our guest, Matt Kona, we have a special, special musical guest from uh, America's Got Talent and Community Auditions. Please help me welcome Mr. Derek Drown. <laughs>
right there by Derek Drown. Beautiful music stuff. All right, Mr. Kona, this is the Comedy Kitchen. We do the cooking thing. We do the comedy thing before we get started. Tell the folks, how'd you get started out in comedy? Ah, uh, well, uh, I, I didn't always uh, do cooking shows exclusively. No, I, I started out in comedy actually in a... Uh, a studio similar to this in, in Brookline, Massachusetts. I did a sketch comedy show when I, when I lived there called Coupon Clippers Digest, which had nothing to do with the show. It was just to trick people into watching for great deals. And we did sketch comedy, and then I got into music and finished college and uh, traveled with some bands, went on tour as a roadie, and decided... Uh, you know, I was making the, the people, the bands laugh, so we would start doing doing stand up. I started the night that I got back, and uh, I haven't stopped since. So. Been going ever since, and you're yeah. having a fun time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I love it. I mean, it's it's cool to do stuff like this. Although, you know, like that was a great song we just heard. I'm a little intimidated sure. though, because I, you know, I'm a failed musician. <laughs> he set the bar. He set the bar for you to follow, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I never made it in music. I was in a barbershop quartet with two other guys, just. If you're having Went a good nowhere. time, what's it matter, right? What's it matter? As long as you have a good time, it don't, that's why they got karaoke. It don't matter if you're a good <laughs> singer, as long as you're having a fun time. Yeah. All right, get started. It is uh, vegetable chow mein, which is an Asian dish. Ooh. So to get started, we have some Asian bok choy, okay? You want to take that out of the bag? Okay, all right. Set it on your old cutting board right there. Bok choy. There you go. Maybe take a knife and cut the head right off of that. All right. Cut the, cut the there thing. There you go. The head's here. Oh, right down. Right, right, right in half, right. right. This part here. <laughs> it's a public beheading. We're not really going to use for All right. now. All right, we'll set that okay. off. Now, we're going to pull out our big, big bowl here. Maybe chop that up a little bit with the knife and just throw the pieces right in there. Right here? All right. Dice it up a little bit. Okay. You do a lot of cooking, Matt? <laughs> Uh, I don't do nearly as much. <laughs> Not so as much as you that, should. That's part of the reason I came here. Who, who does the cooking at your yeah, house? Yeah. Are you a big eat-out guy? Uh, I eat out a You're lot. like a I mean, fast food guy? You do comedy and restaurants and open, and yeah, open mics all night. Yeah. You know, that's where this, you is, this is much healthier for you. Yes. You look like an old pro already, so you got it going on. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Toss it right in the old good? bowl there. Okay. Whamma jamma. Boom. There we go. All right, we make a mess. Don't worry. Everybody gets right. nervous about making a mess, and we don't need to. Be we need blooper about reels. That. That's what we need. All right. Uh, tell folks uh, all the years you've been doing comedy. What's your, what's one of your favorite memories in comedy? Ooh. Uh, all right. Here's one of my favorite memories in comedy. A couple of years ago, uh, I was in the Boston Comedy Festival, which is a big thing. It happens around every November in uh, all over Boston, and it's a competition. But they also have a lot of big comics from out of town come in. And I was in the competition and I uh, had a good experience. I didn't advance in the competition, which is too bad, but you know, there's headliners from all around, so they come in. But I went and I hung out at the finals and I was helping out, volunteering backstage, running like the stage crew, and they were delayed because this was an old theater in the Somerville Theater. They only had two box office windows. So the show started about 45 minutes late there was already a few hundred people in there, so they needed someone to warm up that wasn't competing, and uh, I was there, so I got to do seven minutes in front of about 700 people, and uh, it was great. One of my favorite memories in comedy. So it pays to hang out, right? It pays <laughs> just to hang out sometimes at a comedy gig. Cause yeah. You never know. If they're short and you're in the crowd, they'll get you right in there. <laughs> All right, you want to grab the pea pods over there? In pea the, pods. Uh, in the bag, the green one. All there right. you go. Chop them. Uh, well, take out a handful. Okay. I'm going to set them on your old chopping board there. Hand me the bag. Here's the bag. And I'll take out a handful. And you want to put them together as such and cut off each end and put the middle part in there. Just okay. the tips of each end because you don't want those spearing you in the mouth or nothing. When you okay, eat. so just the tip. All right. Just the tips on okay. each end. And then toss those right in there. All right. So what's your favorite Asian food, Matt? Um, the, what do you look forward to? I, I like I like pad thai pad a lot. Thai? There That's you go. sort of what I, what I've been into. Um, I know there's a there's a variety of different curries. I haven't haven't tried really? all the yeah. curry rainbows colors yet. Had yellow curry recently. Like your spicy attire. Uh huh. Yep. That's How about you, stuff. Dennis? What do you? I've ate it all so much. I'm, I'm kind of sick of it at this point. It used to be <laughs> my favorite food. Then I started working in an Asian food restaurant. Now I've ate it so much. Well, what area in Asian <laughs> food do you prefer the best? I'm a big uh, lobster sauce guy. A little okay. lobster sauce and white rice goes a long way with the shrimp in there. 
I'm a shrimp guy, you know how that goes. All right, so uh, where can we find Matt Kona? You got a website, a Facebook site? Uh, yeah, absolutely, mattkona.com, that's K-O-N-A. And on Facebook, Twitter, find me there. We can be friends, tell jokes to each sure. other. Instagram I like too, which is it's just like the photo app. A lot of people take photos of food and stuff. I mean, I can take one of this and That's you can right find on it there. on Instagram. And the world Matt will be Kona. able to see it. All you guys can go to Instagram and check it out. So uh, what, do you say, what are some of your favorite rooms to play in comedy? Where, where can people catch uh, your act? Well, um, let's see. Uh, all over the Boston area, I, I guess. Um, if I had to pick my favorite room to play uh it's it's tough because it it, it just went away it's a place called grandma's basement but it, it's come back as an open mic on thursdays uh which is at the in brookline village at the village smokehouse on thursday nights at eight it's a free show anyone can get up and perform but it's just a a group of comics that i came up with and developed with that are still hanging around in boston are all really funny and we enjoy going there to tell jokes and hang out. So that's one Good of them. Good stuff when you can hang out with your friends and do what you love. <laughs> All right, next move, we're going to open up our mushrooms here. Okay. Maybe chop up a few mushrooms if we can. All right, dig into the, into the shrooms and chop them up. All right, now when you chop them up, do you go slice them in half or <laughs> long You might want to get the end off there and then okay. just uh, chop away at the rest. I'll help you out All and right. we'll get going on this. Doo -doo -doo. What are some of your favorite dishes to eat? <laughs> right now, if you went to a restaurant, what would you order, Matt? If I went to a restaurant, uh, uh, I, I, I guess it would depend. But, you know, uh, if, we, if we were at uh, an Asian restaurant, I might get some kind of a noodle dish. Sure, maybe. A little lo mein, maybe? Yeah, yeah. some lo veggie lo mein. Sure. Uh, I like... Asian uh, vegetables because they're stuff that I you don't know, see it's in a lot of other it, meals. It's, it's, good, it's good eating, right? Yeah, I've never seen a water chestnut in the wild. So I'm switching know. over to the healthy stuff now because working in an Asian restaurant, I rate, eat mostly the fried food. You know what happens when you eat fried food, Matt? <laughs> what happens? That <laughs> That's what happens, Matt, right there, baby, okay? <laughs> And then you get the fresh greens, okay? And then you start to lose some of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's enough right okay. there. Get the last few in. All right. All right, we have a segment of the show. It is called Funny Food Questions. You ready for a funny food question? Let's do some funny food questions. All right, Matt. If you went grocery shopping I do. and you came home with some mega pussy, what do you think you'd have? Uh, <laughs> hmm. I'd say you have protein powder for cats. Protein powder for cats. It's actually uh, potato chips. It's a bag of potato chips, and uh, our monitors ain't on, but the studio audience can see the bag of potato <laughs> chips. So you go shopping, you get some potato chips, you look up the mega pussy, okay? Oh, all right. And by their laughter, you can tell it's funny, right? Of course you can. Yeah. Are there ridges? Is there? Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't make the potato chips, man. I'm okay. just, I'm just I'm spreading knowledge. You gotta okay. check them out for all yourself, right. brother. All right, you want to cut a couple of carrots out of the bag over there? All right, let's see. A couple of carrots, Doc. All right, we got our, uh, maybe cut oh, the ends off. Them, cut right. each end off. Okay. No, you know, Jack LaLanne actually says leave the skin on. It's more healthy. So okay, yeah. That's, maybe that's uh, grab your potato peeler there. All right, potato peeler. And maybe peeler. just shred some right in there. All right. Look at you go. It works for carrots and potatoes. See, if we had Derek up here, we'd give you a beat to this. <laughs> Studio audience, come on, give it for me. You feel like a hero, don't you, right? Shredding the carrots here in the comedy kitchen. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> He's getting going. Yeah. A little bit more carrots All there. Right. It's real-time carrot shredding. It's real-time carrot shredding. Everything's in real time. <laughs> All right, looking good. Yeah. All right, what you want to do is grab your bean sprouts over there, open up that bag, there's some scissors if you can. Okay, bean sprouts, can, I got you can, it. You can manhandle I got, ooh, it. Ooh, like Hulk Hogan there. All right, All right. maybe pour half the bag right in half there. Half the bag, right in. all right. Bean there sprouts, boom. We're looking good, all right. Uh, after that, we are going to have to cut up a onion. Here's an onion for okay, you. Okay, an onion. Right, I'll all peel right. that a little bit, peel the skin off there, and then chop okay. it up. You, you cut the, t and then you peel. You can cut that, then peel, right. there you go. All right. 
All right. You've done some cooking. Don't tell you I've know done a little on, cooking, right? but I'm a little, I'm a little rusty when it comes right. to it. And, and you know, it's been so long since I've cooked. I'm getting, a, getting a little emotional here. I think it's an onion. Okay. All right. While we're doing this, I'm going to cut up a green pepper. You cut up the onion. Tell the folks uh, when you were young and you were thinking about doing comedy. Who are some of the mainstream comics that inspired you to want to try out comedy? Oh, that's a great question. Well. Um, I, I was fairly fortunate at, at a really young age. The, the, the first uh, stand-up comedian that I ever saw was George Carlin, and I was I was probably in like the sixth grade or seventh grade. He just it was right before uh, Brain Droppings. His book came out, and he was performing at the Beverly High School, which seems like a strange place to, to see George Carlin. And it wasn't a part of a high school. Uh, function or anything. It was just a separate event held there. Uh, it was really cool and that was definitely a big inspiration. It caused me to go check out George Carlin. I would find comedy tapes in my local record store sure. and then I saw just how many there were. I started getting into Eddie Murphy, uh, Delirious yeah. was, was, a, was a big one for me. Big in the 80s. Uh, Every kid had to hype from their parents <laughs> and watch that one, boy. Yeah. Huh. But I loved Saturday Night Live, so all the comedians that I saw on Saturday Night Live that I found out that did stand up or had albums and Adam Sandler, that, you know, that's, that's who I gravitated towards, and that's how I really wanted to be a part of comedy that way. Sure. Mm. All right, we'll just chop those up a few fine. Sure. We don't need the whole long end. Okay. All right, chopping up. Whamma jamma, throw them right in the bowl. We're looking good. Whamma jamma, all right. Go. Get a go. handful, Boom. toss them in there, sprinkle them around. Okay. Boom. Looking good. Okay. All right. Next, we are going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. I think you get you. Okay. A teaspoon's hidden over there somewhere. Half a teaspoon right here. Okay, and I got some water boiling here because we're in real time here and we don't have time to watch water boil. But just water, boil some water. We'll toss that right in here. Into the water, all right. And whamma jamma, looking good. And okay. I think this, this half a teaspoon was half full, not half empty. Wasn't half empty, okay. okay. All right, here's what we're gonna do. You see your little Tupperware bowl over there? Tupperware bowl. Gonna grab that out there. All right, you wanna pull that, put some flour, maybe a quarter of the way full you wanna put that. Okay. Going. A lot of pressure. You under pressure, man? There's no pressure on the comedy kitchen. Everybody gets nervous, but it all comes out good in the end. All right. You're almost there, man. Almost there. We're I'm rooting for we're you, brother. Fourth of the way there, guys. <laughs> no, no clapping for all this. Right, that's, this good, is, that's, yeah, good, just, that's good. That's good. That's good. All right. What you want to do? Oh. We're gonna pour a little bit of water in here. All right. And we're gonna try and. Uh, Mix that up a little bit until it looks like uh, Elmer's okay. glue. Remember when you kid Elmer's glue? That's what we're trying to make, a kind of pasty right. flour here. Yeah, and just like a kid, I will eat this. Okay. And of course. All right. This is your taste, man. This is your thickener. We're going to yep. thicken stuff up with that. This is the traditional thickening process with the giant spoon and the bottle of water, flour. Okay. You're enjoying this, man. Yes. I can tell, right? I'm trying. You are, brother, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Making all the years glue. you've been doing comedy, I know you hit the drunks, you hit the hecklers. What's one of the craziest things ever happened to you in comedy? Oh, oh, geez. Um, yeah, I've, I've had people just jump on stage with, with me. Really? Uh, like they expect it, uh, they're almost entitled to, to be there. They're like, I'm here, I'm drunk, I'm part of the show, you want to see me? And uh, that's always a little bit tough to handle. Sometimes you'll try to take your time and uh, appease them. Looking good. Yeah, but yeah, it can get rough. At one time, I just spent my entire set interviewing a, a drunk lady. And <laughs> Sometimes you have to. If that's they all she up, would let me do. You gotta go yeah. with it, right? Yeah. A lot of people, they get drinking, and they want to get involved with the show, and you know they don't realize you didn't work out your act to right. deal with a drunk. But if you're drunk, you really don't care, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course you do. All right, next thing I'm going to need is a teaspoon of black pepper. You got your black pepper got over there in a little white pepper, thing? Got this black pepper. Got the and, uh, uh, you had your spoon a second. I ago. do. I have the spoon. You got I have it in my, spoon. my hidden spot. All right. And this is a this is a half teaspoon. So you need two of these. You got it. All right. 
Here's one. And the sequel. The long awaited part two. It's beautiful. Okay. All right, what you want to do, grab a handful of those vegetables, dig right in, and mix it up a little bit before All you right. do. Mixing it up. And then throw some right in here. Okay. One more, that's good. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, the next thing we need is we need some sesame oil. You can open up your sesame oil All right. there. Open up and sesame, okay. Or open sesame, all right. Open sesame oil, here we go. How much do we need? Uh, just just a couple of squirts, so. A couple, more, couple of pumps. A little more. All right. Well, that's a slow pour, all right. A yeah? couple more. Okay, that's take good. that. All right, we all should right. take that. We set that right off okay. to the side. All right, on the, uh, on the local scene, who, who are some of your favorite comics on the local scene to work with? Oh, all right, that's uh, Ted Pettengale. He's a funny guy, a friend of mine. Uh, John Paul Rivera, uh, Anthony Sibeli, uh Krista Weiss is very funny. And these are a lot of comedians that I that came up with, and so it's great to see them go up. Of course, there's hilarious guys like Mike Whitman, Dan, Dan Crone, Dan Bulger, Kelly McFarland, uh, Patty Ross, a lot of you could go on and on. So those are your circle, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, not everyone, but the last the last few are, are comics that I really look up to. Sure. The first few are comics that I sort of came up with. And I know you don't want to leave anybody out, but if you had to oh, pick one, who, who do you think's got the brightest future ahead of them? If you <laughs> well, had to choose one. Well, there's a comic now, uh, Alingon Mitra, who is currently on Last Comic Standing, and and he's been on there. Uh, so if you just search Twitter for his name, Alingon, uh, he's he's trying to get on on the final episode, and he's he's got a bright future. He won the Boston Comedy Festival, donated half the money to the One Fund, and split the rest of it with the other comedians in the festival, which That's is That's awesome crazy. when you can give back. Right, give yeah. a hand for him. For yeah, Alingon. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, here's where it gets tricky, okay? Now what we're going to do, we're going to get our thickener here. We're going to add a little bit more water. All right. All right, we want to add some of this, and as we do, this is going to thicken it, and we're just going to stir this right up a little bit. All right. We're going to need a little more here. Doo -doo -doo. This is the glue to keep it all together. This is the glue that thickens it and makes it a gravy instead of just some water like you'd uh, hope to have, yeah, okay? Yeah. You see how it's changing color there? Yep. And that would be why. You know what we're almost ready to do? The best part of the show. You know what the best part of the show is, Matt? What's the best part of the show, The Best Dennis? part of the show is the eating part. <laughs> it's starting to smell good. Can you smell that? Absolutely. All the pepper yeah. and spices, they're really starting to pop out at you. All right, so we got this together. And Mom is prepared. Give it up, Mom. I cannot do any of this without Mom's help. I write you right right now. Okay, mom is prepared. All right, we got a couple of bowls here, man. We're making a big old mess here. Oh, yeah. But that's half the fun of getting yeah. to the eating part. <laughs> All right, why don't you pour a little bit in that bowl? Grab your little spoon there and dump a little bit in. Okay. All right, scoop a little bit in this bowl. You're gonna wanna run down the store. You're gonna wanna buy yourself a bag of crunchy noodles. And the little dry noodles we sprinkle right on top. Little for me, little for you. All right, you ready for the taste test? Absolutely. Let's do it, man. One, two. Oops, get the spoon. All right. Go for it. Healthy. <laughs> the second it was fresh, it was healthy, it was, it was good. All right, standing. we can keep eating all day, but hey, we don't have time for that. No. Final question, Matt. When you get done your comedy career, you look back, where do you hope to end up? What do you want to be remembered for? What are we going to look back and remember Matt Cohen for? Um, ooh, that's a good one. Um, I'd like to just be remembered as, as a consistently funny comic that you, that you want to come back and see, because I'm out working hard, writing, developing stuff, and hopefully just uh, touring, doing comedy, and... Uh, you know, being parts of cool, 
web adventures and videos and different, different anything to do with comedy. I just want to be associated with. Sure, you can do what you love to do until the day you die, and what's more fun than that, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, we've talked about how funny you are. We've done the cooking thing. Would you be nice enough to give the folks at home some of your stand-up? Sure thing. Sure thing, and Let's we will it. be right back. Okay. Welcome back, and now you know how to make the chow mein, one of the dishes from the Asian culture you can cook up. Be sure to check out my website, www.dennisworth.webs.com. Joke in the Box Comedy Clubs. One of the guys I've had in my rooms, it is my pleasure. I give you Mr. Matt Kona. Thank you, Dennis. Hey. It's great to be here, guys. And yeah, the veggie chow mein was wonderful. And one of the main reasons that we made that is because I am a vegan, which I have to explain what that is to people because sometimes they'll confuse it with other things like vegetarian or homosexual. <laughs> and it's slightly different. Okay, sometimes it's different. It means you don't eat meat, you don't eat dairy products, and you don't make sense to the rest of your family. <laughs> that is 100% true. So I remember the first time I went out to lunch with my dad, we went to a restaurant that I thought that we could both enjoy because they had their own vegetarian section of the menu. And I'm reading it, and the third item is a tuna salad. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking, oh, they must think it's vegetarian because of what it's surrounded by. <laughs> I'm expecting the third item under their seafood menu to be a pork sandwich just because the pig drowned. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I would play it safe and order a veggie burger. But here's the thing, not all veggie burgers are made vegan because sometimes they'll have cheese or egg whites or fur coats and leather jackets or Michael Vick comeback player of the year trophy, something that's harmful to animals and that may have expired in 2010 with that reference. So you gotta be safe. But it turns out that this was vegan, this veggie burger. So I ordered it and the waitress walked away and my dad just looked at me so disappointed in my life choices. He says, you know, you used to love cheeseburgers, <laughs> you know. Uh, because it would be right outside and it was windy. So I just looked at my dad and I was like, you know, you used to love mom. <laughs> <laughs> but I love my dad still. Although he, he'll, he'll try to be cooler than he actually is. He'll do this thing that I'm sure a lot of dads do, which he'll try to use cool young people slang in everyday conversation. He'll just bust into any room and be, what's up? It's like, hold on, Dad. First of all, that Super Bowl was like 13 years ago. <laughs> and also, I really wish you'd put a lock on this bathroom door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it's tough going to barbecues as a, as a vegan because there's not always food there. Like I went to a place in Alston, some friend's house, and it's Alston, so I thought they would have veggie burgers. And they did not. They didn't have veggie dogs, but it was down the street from this place called Spike's Junkyard Dogs, which is a hot dog restaurant that also has veggie dogs. So we started walking that way, and I passed a buddy who said, hey, if you're thinking of going to Spike's, don't bother. They just ran out of veggie dogs. I was like, oh, no. But I, I wanted to be sure, so I just called them to double check, and they said, yeah, we won't have any more veggie dogs until tomorrow. So I hung up. And then I realized there's another Spikes on the other side of town. They might have some. The problem is I don't have a car, and they don't deliver. So what I did was I called them up, and I said, hey, this is Gary from the Spikes in Alston. <laughs> Listen, we ran out of veggie dogs. Is there any way you could send some over to us? And there's a pause. And he says, sure, how many do you need? And I say, ah, two cases. Keep in mind, I have no idea how much is in one case. I just thought that two cases would sound more official. So he said, OK, we'll put them in a cab. They'll be right over. Hang up the phone. Triumphant. Things are actually in motion. Then I realized I should probably give the Alston Spikes a heads up. So I call them back, probably setting a record for the most phone calls they've ever received in a day. And I, I say, hey, this is Gary from the Boylston Street Spikes. Someone called here, said you guys ran out of veggie dogs. So I tell you what, we're going to send over two cases. He says, two cases? I say, look, I think there's going to be a lot of people. We're going to put them in a cab. They'll be over there in five minutes. He says, I'm sorry, who is this? I say, it's Gary. The cab's here. Got to go. Hang up the phone. Wait five minutes walk down to the Spikes, order a single veggie burger, 
It arrives, I eat it, it's delicious. On the way out, I look to the manager, I say, hey, if you see Gary, tell him I said thanks a lot. <laughs> he just looked at me, did you just do a transfer at this place you don't even work at? And never in my life did I wish more to have a half of roll of Mentos than then, just so I could say, <laughs> and also Mentos is a very refreshing treat after you've just eaten a veggie burger that you've summoned from across town. So thank you guys very much. <laughs> Bring back your host, Dennis Worth. Great job, Matt. Thank you very much for being on the Comedy Kitchen. I'd like to thank the crew. I'd like to thank the studio audience. Most of all, I thank you at home for tuning in. Once again, I give you the music musical genius of Mr. Derek Drown. Thank you.